All right, good morning, everybody. Um, we're going to get started uh, with this webinar to introduce the new Creo design packages. Um, so I said we're going to be delivering this today. Also, we Root Solutions, um, we're BTC's platinum partner in the UK. Um, again, thank you for everybody who has uh, attended this webinar. It's another great turnout. We've done uh, a number of these in the past now for CFD and releases of Creo 5. Um, so uh, yeah, another great attendance. Um, a little bit of housekeeping uh, before we get started. Uh, the webinar will be lasting uh, approximately 35, 40 minutes. Um, if you do have any questions as we go along, uh, please could you ask them via the question section. Um, we will try and answer as we go along. If not, there is a, a question section at the end. Um, and we'll try to uh, answer as many as we can in the time that we've got. So, quick introduction. Uh, my name is Aston Smith. Uh, some of you may recognize me. I'm one of the account managers at Root Solutions here, uh, part of the sales team that covers the, the whole of the UK uh, for PTC software. Um, as I said, I'm being joined with uh, Rory Island Bocock. He's our pre sales engineer. Uh, you will recognize him if you've attended any of our webinars before or one of our Creo launch events. Um, he's part of uh, the biggest PTC uh, pool support engineers in the UK. So we've got a quick agenda today. So we're just um, we're going to go and introduce the, the new Creo packages and then we're going to jump straight into demonstrating the capabilities within those licenses and then we're going to cover off uh, any questions at the end. We're going to run a, a quick poll for the people who've been able to attend today. This is really important for us to understand uh, a bit more about our customer base. Um, yeah, so the first question we'd like to understand from our user base, uh, what version of Creo you're uh, currently using? Uh, so it said those who are on Creo 2 or 3, um, they're kind of seem to be older packages now and uh, less supported. And obviously for those, most of our customers have now moved on to uh, Creo 4 and 5. Um, I'll just leave that for another moment or so. Now, oh, great, appreciate everybody for, uh, for answering here. Uh, thanks everybody for that. We just collected uh, all the information. Uh, it's great to see that uh, most of our customer base has now moved on to uh, Creo 4 and 5. Interesting for those who are still on Creo 2 or earlier, that has been an unsupported platform from PC for a couple of years now. As of this month, Creo 3 also became an unsupported product for PTC. So just to make you aware, there are no further uh, maintenance code releases for this. So if you want to get yourself upgraded to Creo 4, uh, get yourself on a, on a supported platform. Going to run to run our second poll here. So if you could just uh, let us know what kind of licenses uh, you think you're using for PTC Creo. Uh, people know we've used uh, PC software for years. Perpetual is the license basis we have had, and we've moved on to subscription. Some of our customers are using a mix, and it's obviously useful to know if you don't know as well, because there are there are some differences in functionality from perpetual licenses to subscription. Just collecting those votes there. Thank you everybody for responding. Give that a few another minute or so. And I've brilliant uh, say so, uh, so still quite a number of you are using perpetual it's actually quite a nice spread actually um uh, interesting for those i said who, who don't know because there may be some functionality within your creo licenses that you are not aware of um so it'd be good if you, if you do want any more information on that just you know please do uh, uh let us know but yeah the the answer there reflects our, our customer base which is that you know around a quarter to a third of our customers are now using subscription 
software and kind of uh, gaining the benefits of uh, now what you're receiving those licenses. So thank you very much for that. Uh, now move. So the reason why PTC have announced these new Creo design packages is to really simplify uh, the license types that customers have availability to. You know, on, on the screen now is just an example of the licenses that are being maintained in our current customer base. As you will see, there are many different types in there. For those who have used PTC software for a number of years, you know, I'm sure there's some good old names in there that you'll recognize from maybe when they were bought in you know, the kind of mid 90s. Uh, and some of these are still being used and actually maintained today. You know, just even looking at the, the recent licenses of Creo Engineer, for example, you know, we can have a Creo Engineer 2, but that can be Creo Engineer 2 with AAX, Creo Engineer 2 with BMX, with MDO. And there are many different versions of these licenses. The problem that causes is that customers don't always know exactly what they've got really. Um, you know, for example, it, in some of these perceived bigger packages, you actually don't have technically all the functionality that you might have in some of the, the smaller packages. So a confusing confusing message, really. So what PC doing is simplifying that. Um, but I've even had a customer come to me and ask, you know, how much is it to buy mannequin? And then I have to tell him that he's actually had it hidden in one of his licenses for the past uh, couple of years. So, uh, so yeah, it makes it a much, much clearer message. And here we are with the new packages. So what you can see is we are moving to five uh, simple packages from PTC. So we anticipate that most of our customer base will be using the first one or two packages, so design essentials or design advanced. Um, and what, what it is here is it's a, it's a sliding scale. So as you start at the top of design essentials, as you go down that line through design advanced, advanced plus, premium, premium plus, you only gain functionality. Uh, so I said it's kind of starts at starts at big and just gets bigger and bigger. Um, so PTC have been a subscription only company since uh, January of 2018. So this is great because you can look at your license requirements every year. So you know this year you've got new products. You need you know some flow analysis for example. So you might choose one of the uh, a premium or a premium plus package. But the following year, you may not need all that functionality, so you can drop down to just a, a standard Creo Design Essentials license. Um, for this uh, presentation today, we'll be concentrating on the, the entry-level license, which is the license we expect most of our customers to be using, which is this Design Essentials. Um, so this is the one where uh, said, most of our customers will probably be using it going forward. And the good thing is all the functionality within this license obviously will also be included in any of the other more enhanced licenses. Um, so to give you a bit of a timeline of the capabilities in the license, most of you may recognize a career parametric uh, on a perpetual license. So, you know, customers have paid um, their maintenance, which uh, includes uh, their support and updates going forward. And on a perpetual basis, you receive Creo parametric. So this gives them access to the, you know, the core three modeling capabilities, detailed sheet metal uh, within Creo. Since around 2016, PTC introduced uh, a subscription uh, license model, um, with the most common license being Creo Essentials, still the most common license in our customer base at the moment, uh, on subscription. And this added functionality for things like Flex Modeling, which is a fantastic tool for modifying imported geometry, uh, you know, design exploration as well, you know, so you can uh, investigate those early design concepts and human factors to understand you know, how your products interact with, uh, uh, with people and uh, a great addition of a home use license so you can install a full license of Creo on a personal machine. So if you can't make it, make it into the office that day, you can still work from home. I'll let you decide if that is a good or a bad thing. With these new packages, PTC uh, has now added these fantastic capabilities to every single license. So we've taken the Creo parametric uh, modeling capabilities that you had in your standard Creo license, added those fantastic benefits you get when you subscribe to Creo. And now, if you subscribe to Creo Design uh, Essentials, you will add all these extra fantastic functionality. You know, things like collaboration for SolidWorks. You know, great tool if you've got uh, within your team or you've got a, uh, a supplier of yours that uses SolidWorks, you can, when the model updates, you can automatically update within your model. Um, you know, and, th and things like piping cabling, fantastic tool, which we're gonna talk about a bit more in a moment. Um, 
what we're going to talk about, uh, concentrate more on today uh, for demonstrations is these bottom five uh, modules, which is piping, cabling, advanced framework, render studio, and simulation elite and intelligent fastener. Uh, you know, from the discussions I've had with my customers, these are going to be the licenses that are uh, uh, going to be uh, most applicable and most used uh, by our customer base. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Rory now to go through uh, some of these new capabilities in a bit more detail. Um, again, if you do have any questions as you go along, uh, please put them in the uh, in the question centre, and we will try and uh, answer them uh, at the end. But, uh, I think, thanks for listening. I'll hand you over to Rory. Cheers, Aston. Thank you for that um, good overview of what we're about to cover here. So as Aston said. We're going to run through sort of the, the sort of main five aspects of the new licenses uh, as, that you get now uh, with the base uh, license functionality. So we think this is going to be appropriate for most of our customers. Um, so we're not going to cover some of the more advanced stuff, but the, the new stuff that's in this new base license uh, of Creo, we're going to run through here. So first things first, then we're going to take a look at um, framework. So this has been a sort of part of Creo for a good couple of years now. I think it was introduced at Creo 3. Um, so it's a well-established product um, and you know it's now part of the base license. It used to be a, a, an extension, but you can now get it as standard. So what does this enable us to do? It enables us to create frameworks, okay? Very quickly through a nice user-friendly UI, accessing lots of different standardized components for beams, fixtures, and fittings. Um, so if we just run through now, what I've got here, I've, I've pre-recorded all these videos, um, so they're all live, but just been recorded, just so it keeps me on a, a time scale. I tend to wander off and uh, start talking about other things. So for my own sake, I, I record a video. So everything's live. A few things have been a bit sped up just to save us a bit of time, but I'll mention that as we run through. So AFX then. So this is all included, as I say, within the standardized license now, and it's accessible from within uh, the assembly interface. So we've got a tab up top here. Uh, and what we what we do here, what the basic premise is, is we start off with a skeleton sketch, like you would draw on sort of a, a napkin. You'd sketch out a framework with lines, and that defines the overall size and shape of, of our framework. With that matchstick layout, then, what we have the ability to do is choose from a predefined list of beams, fixtures, and fittings, okay? We then overlay these beams uh, on top of our skeleton design here. So as you can see, very simply, I can go through and apply beams over the top of uh, this skeleton model, uh, which is in the form of a sketch. And we can jump backwards and forwards between different profiles. So I've got a, a U-beam already in there, and I'm now just adding in a, a box section. So again, a standardized um, beam that we, that we want in this model. And simply clicking on the, uh, the sections here, you can see it adds in all of, all of those box sections. So we'll just let that run out. Uh, and once we've got all those beams in place, I say we have to dump them down in place nice and quickly, we want to go in and sort of tidy these up now. So we have added functionality for sort of rotating and repositioning these beams based upon our skeleton sketch. So I need to reorientate some of these components. Um, we can do that with a simple UI. So I'm just rotating, rotating these through 90 degrees here. And then just to make sure everything's in constraint within the, the dimensions I've created in my sketch, I'm just realigning these selected beams here so that they're, they're in line with my skeleton sketch. So I'm not overextending anywhere that I don't need to. So from there, then we've got all our beams in place, but they're all kind of overextending and overlapping, which is a bit messy. So we've also got predefined joints. Uh, again, just a simple combination of clicks on our on our model in conjunction with the set list of default um, constraint types. So I'm just adding in here a couple of mitre joints um, for our main part of the frame. And for the rest of the joints here, we're just going in and adding a few box joints. Okay, so just trimming everything back so it's all in line with the, uh, with, with the frame. Okay, so you can see here, using a repeat functionality, it's very quick to go through and just line up all our models. We can then utilize all these cut lengths and things in our drawings later on, which I'm going to run through in a second. From here then, we're pretty much done. Okay, so we've created our nice framework really, really quickly here. And I'm just going to add in a few uh, connector plates. So when the guys on the shop floor come to assemble this thing, it all goes together. Okay, and again, you can choose from a whole list of default 
fixtures and fittings for connecting beams and frames together. Now, this actually works really well with uh, the intelligent fastener, uh, which we're going to show off uh, in just a second. So um, keep in mind, you can use all of these sort of tools uh, together to create your final assembly. So we've got our final frame here, uh, and I'm just going to bring that into the drawing because framework also has the ability to create a all sort of uh, default cut, cut list as well. So we can simply add in a table here that defines the cut list for this um, object. Um, we can then also add in things like stock length tables. Okay, so we'll add up all the lengths of each individual beam. And because this is Creo, it's obviously all intelligent and will update as our model does. So if we go in and change the, uh, the overall height dimension of this table here, you can see that will all propagate through into our drawings. So there's a sort of brief overview um, of framework. I say there was a light version in previous versions of Creo, so you may have had a play with it, uh, but you now have, if you go up to the, the new licensing scheme, have access to the sort of full um, sort of list that is uh, AFX. So just sort of summarize on that, you know, we've got that intuitive user-friendly UI for creating these frameworks, okay? Comprehensive libraries of standardized beams, fixes and fittings, okay? These are also customizable. So if you have your own beams, your own fixtures, you can add these into the library and use the AFX interface for creating your, your frameworks. Okay. From there into the drawings, then it can automatically create our cut lists uh, and your bill of materials as well. So we move on to the next one. I say, if you've got any questions, fire them through. Um, we'll probably answer those at the end, but fire them through, we'll pick them up as we go along. The next extension then that's now part of uh, Creo is IFX. So this is our intelligent fastener library. Okay, and enables us to add in fixtures like bolts and screws to our models. Okay. So I'll run through a little demo of this um, on screen here. So again, it's all built into the standardized Creo and we have a sort of pre-dedicated tool uh, within Creo. So what I'm doing here is I'm just defining uh, a location um, for a box okay, on this assembly here. Now, again, we have a vast cat uh, catalog of, of different um, standardized bolts, fixtures, and fittings, okay, which we can choose from from this drop-down menu. I'm automatically measuring the size of the predefined hole I have in my model here to choose the right thread size, but I can go in and manually choose that along with the length, or I can let Creo measure the length. So you can see then sort of that intelligent uh, window down at the bottom there, we've got a nice UI showing me sort of the cross section of the components I'm choosing there. We can also add in things like tolerancing. So I'm going for a free fit and I'm going to assemble this uh, fastener on each of those patterned axes. And by doing that, you can see how it will update the topology um, of the, the washer there. So that angled washer updates as it goes around my model. It understands the geometry that's underlying. As well as bolts, we can assemble things like screws. Okay, so I'm using a datum axis here and just choosing a different type of selection will determine that I'm creating a screw rather than a bolt. Again, we get to choose from a vast cat uh, catalog of different fasteners. Um, in this instance, we're doing a screw. Here I'm choosing my thread size. I don't have a predefined hole in this model, so I'm choosing it here. And what Creo will actually do is when it creates this fastener, it will actually dive down into the part level and create the hole at part level. Okay, so if I go and create a drawing of my component, I have the hole ready there to dimension and all the hole notes and things come through as well automatically. With the full version of uh, AFX, sorry, IFX, which we have now, um, you can also add in dowels, okay? So these fastening pins to align the casing here, we can go in and create that. And if I just hide that case off, you can see it's patterned those as well. Now we're in Creo here, so design changes are always gonna happen. Um, so here I'm gonna go in and just activate this uh, front end plate here and change the thickness of it. Now, our screws have already been defined here, but IFX comes with a, uh, an automatic uh, checklist. So it will go back and verify all of the components that we've assembled, and it will identify whether they're too short or too long. Let's pick, the, pick these up here, and we can easily go in and change those, just automatically remeasuring the length. Okay. Now, one thing worth noting here, if you work with uh, any data management like Windchill, uh, we can export all of these bolts, fixtures, and fittings that are um, comprised within the, the, the tool here, and you can upload those into your own library so you don't end up with duplicated parts and that sort of stuff. Um, so we can, uh, we can 
extract all of those and upload those within Meteor. So that's the Intelligent Fastener. I said that's been around again for a while. I think it was introduced in Creo 3, so it's a well-established product. Um, it can be customized as well. So if you have your own libraries of bolts um, and fasteners, you can integrate that within the IFX uh, UI so you can assemble those as easily as you can with standardized components for that. Okay, um, so something a lot of people have been waiting for within Creo is a, a, a very good rendering package, okay? Um, so, say so we've been a bit limited on what we can do in the past when it comes to rendering. We now have a fully fledged rendering system within Creo Parametric. So we utilize the Keyshot engine. So people at Luxian, um, they developed their own uh, engine and it's called Keyshot. Uh, and we, we take advantage of that. So we can develop scientifically accurate um, renders from within our, within Creo Parametric. Okay, so it's a separate, um, again, UI for creating our renders and we can utilize the existing materials within Creo Parametric. So I'm just pulling through a, a gold appearance here and I'm just gonna apply that to my component. The nice thing about working within Creo, though, is we're in Creo, so I can seamlessly jump backwards and forwards between rendering and making model changes. Okay, I don't have to re-export my files, re-update my my scene in another uh, piece of software. I can just jump backwards and forwards between tabs within Creo and see how my renders updating. Okay, so, seamlessly. so going in, creating materials is like it's always been within Creo. Okay, so nothing new, nothing scary there. We can just go in and changes, material properties, that sort of stuff. Applying new materials, again, it's the same within Creo. Okay, so just choosing surfaces or, or edges, whatever it may be. And we also have the ability to, to affect the lighting environment here. So I'm just going and changing the scene. This is gonna change the lighting, and this is a HDRI, so it's like a 360 degree image. Uh, and it takes the light points and the dark points and creates uh, a lighting environment from those. Making changes to sort of the, the brightness of the scene and where my shadows are is quickly and straightforward. And I can also go in and change things like the background display. Maybe I don't want the, the environment to be my background. I just want a plain uh, dark gray color here. Snapping to a predefined view, you can make use of Creo 5's new perspective mode. Okay, so to get even more realistic views. And we can go in and change the render time setting. So if you've used something like Keyshot before, um, you'll understand all of that sort of stuff. Now, worth noting what I just flagged up there, we can export to a bit file. So if you do have um, Keyshot, you can get so far within Creo, export your uh, bit file, open that up in Keyshot and carry on working with it in Keyshot. I've then chosen my um, chosen output file type, so JPEG. Uh, a resolution and we'll just run through and hit a render there. So just as a bit of an example, um, this ran for maybe I think a couple, two, three minutes um, just to get a, a quick screen dump out just so I can show you. So it's a nice, quick, intuitive tool for creating photorealistic results. Okay? It's something we've been lacking, uh, a lot of customers have been wanting it, so it's now there in the basic package when you move up to Creo Design Essentials. So again, just to summarize, uh, we utilize the Keyshot engine, so we get full scientifically accurate results from our uh, real-time renderer. Uh, we have the ability to add in HDRI images for our lighting environments, add things in like shadows. Uh, we can calculate sort of caustic effects and global illumination uh, and all that sort of stuff. And we have over 200 predefined material types with the ability for you to go in and add your own as well. Simulate Elite then, okay? So let's run through this. So now in the base package of Creo, we have the ability to do full um, structural analysis on both part and assembly models. All standard packages in the past, you had Creo uh, Simulate Lite, which limited you on the number of surfaces you could analyze. Now we can do full structural analysis on both parts and assemblies. So this is great for engineers that need to do ad hoc sort of on the go uh, engineering tests to make sure all the components are within sort of good ballpark figures of what, what they're trying to achieve. So on here, I'm going in, I've just constrained the base half of this bracket here, and I'm adding in uh, a load up top um, on, on this bracket. From here, I can go in and assign a material. So in Creo 4, we teamed up with a company called Granta and they provide us now with a standardized list of uh, materials, which are all scientifically accurate and, and kept up to date with each new release of Creo. From there then, 
we can use Creo's uh, meshing capabilities. Uh, in the past, you were stuck with uh, just an automatic mesh if you had the light version, but you can now go in and fully define and redefine your meshing uh, when it comes to creating these structural analyses. Creating a new static here, um, I'm just um, calculating the results of the loads and constraints I've already put on screen, but you can stack these up so you can run multiple analyses um, one after the other. So you can let them all run overnight and then view the results in the morning. Once our analysis is uh, completed there, um, I skipped about five seconds of video out there just so you are familiar with sort of time scales and that sort of stuff. I'm opening up a predefined uh, template, which is just showing a couple of different examples of what, we've, what we're testing for here. So on the left, I have the stress of the bracket, and on the right, I have the displacement. So I'm just going to turn off the animation on my stress here, uh, view the model in its most deformed state, and I can easily find out where the maximum stress is on that component. On the right hand side here, again, I'm going to toggle into a deformed state, and we can further interrogate this component. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to run a section through my model. Okay. What I'm going to choose here is a dynamic ISO surface, and this is going to show me all the locations on this model that have the same value of displacement. Okay, so running this surface through dynamically, I can see all the all the areas of this component that have the same value of displacement. There are further things we can do in here, but one of the others would be to generate a report. So we can help we can get Creo to automatically generate us a report so we can send these results to other members within the team. Okay. Um, but that's now um, part of the Creo Design Essentials package is full structural simulation on both parts and assemblies. Um, so again, it's seamlessly integrated within Creo, so you can jump backwards and forwards between your components, uh, between modeling and structural analysis. So if you have design changes after you run an analysis, you can easily go back, update your mesh, and rerun the analysis to find out the results. Okay. But if any of you have used uh, Simulate in the past, you should all be familiar with this one. Okay, the final thing we're going to run through this uh, this morning um, is piping and cabling. Okay, so this is giving us the ability to run uh, pipes and cables through our assemblies uh, and automatically use all that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, help us generate our, our drawings to go along with that. So we'll kick off with um, cabling. So again, this has been in since Creo 2, or uh, before that, I believe. So it's a well-established product within the Creo platform. Now, what cabling enables us to do is route cables through our assemblies here um, to predefined locations. Okay, so I'm actually utilizing a, a schematics drawing from Creo Schematics here which has got my start and end points, but I'm using cabling to determine the location and the path in which those cables need to take to in order to get there. So you can do this two ways. You can create a network or we can do it manually. So using a network, you can predefine paths throughout your entire assembly and allow Creo to determine the most sort of the optimized route through that um, product. So it will create the shortest path possible for your wires um, to run through your components um, to get to where they need to be. The other method of that would be to um, manually trace your sort of wires through your, through your system. So here I'm going to pull through another couple of set of wires, run them partially through a network. Um, but you know sometimes when you're running through a network, Creo is making some assumptions, and sometimes those assumptions need tweaking. So we can easily go back, pick up on a set of wires, and redefine the path that they need to take. So here, just referencing geometry on my model. I can redefine the path this uh, wire takes and, and pass it through these sort of connecting uh, clips, um, which connect everything into the correct position. From there, then, we can take that wire, uh, that harness, and go in and create a drawing from that. So we can flatten out that harness automatically and pull through the required information. So there I'm pulling through a harness table. I can also pull through uh, a bit of materials as well. Okay? So we can automatically generate all this information, again, creating bomb balloons as necessary. Next then we'll have a look at piping. So piping is very similar to uh, the cabling extension, okay, and again we get to choose from a predefined list of pipes uh, and assemble those connecting point A to point B automatically within Creo Parametric. So here I am routing a cable from one end point to another. Okay, and it's going to pick up on the existing pipe that's already being used here 
and I can then go in and configure how I want the path to be joined. Okay, so it'll do automatically, but I can go in and tweak that using interactive drag handles, okay, which enables me to adjust dimensions. Uh, and one of the powerful things about piping is, compared to this sort of using a sweep is it understands the pipe you're using. So it understands the bend radiuses the pipe can go to and won't let you sort of go beyond those limits. Making changes to existing pipes is straightforward as well. So here I'm taking an existing part of, pi uh, part of the pipe structure and I'm making a, a tweak to it. So I'm just offsetting this pipe on itself to avoid some geometry at sort of the top level assembly here. So choosing straightforward references and drag handles, I can easily add a bit of a U-bend into this uh, pipe here to avoid that top level geometry as well as making a rotation. Very similar to the cabling side of things, we can take all these pipes through to drawings and drawings can help us automatically create our bit of materials, our bend tables, and all the stuff that goes along with piping. Okay. So again, as a bit of an overview, um, we can automatically route our cables through our system. Okay, uh, We can easily change those using drag handles, we can validate our own uh, custom paths if we need to, uh, and we also get the advantage of being automatically great drawings and bit of materials and harnessing and bend tables that come along with both of those sort of areas within the piping and cables and functionality. So as an overview, that, that completes sort of the demonstration side, say it was a, a sort of a snippet of each of those individual areas. Obviously, if you want to see a little bit more of those individual areas, get in touch with us and we can, we can arrange some more in-depth demonstrations um, for you guys on, the, on those sort of individual areas. Uh, for now, though, I'll hand back over to Aspen, who's just going to run through a final couple of slides um, just to clear a few things up. No worries. Thanks, Rory. No, good to uh, good to see uh, what the new functionality is going to be in these new Creo design packages. Um, uh, so what we did, we concentrated uh, on the uh, what repeatedly refers to as the T1, so the Creo Design Essentials package. So everything that we've shown today is now included in that basic package. Uh, and again, this. This slide just goes into a little bit more detail as to what's included in those other licenses. So as, as you go down, you you increase your functionality all the way to the top license at Career Design Premium Plus, which includes things like you know advanced uh, FEA and CFD uh, capabilities. Um, so yeah, you can get a lot of functionality in some of these licenses. I think what what we see in our customer base is that using a lot of the uh, I mean, the number of the standard career design essentials or design advanced licenses, and then maybe adding one or two of the more advanced licenses to give, you know, some of the users some extra functionality. So, um, so you simply just pick the, uh, the license that seems to work best for you uh, and go ahead and, and enjoy the new capabilities in the career design uh, licenses. Um, just going to run through a couple of questions uh, that have come in. Um, so one of the questions was, how do I move to one of these new licenses from my standard Creo? Uh, as one of the slides earlier, there are a lot of the uh, old PTC packages, so it's actually best for you to maybe talk to one of our uh, account managers who can talk you through the uh, the options from moving to whatever your current Creo license is, whether perpetual or subscription, and uh, moving them to uh, one of these new Creo design, you know, essentials. You know, you don't have to map like for like. You know, if you have a standard Creo license, uh, you know, you could map to the uh, the, the top uh, top package in Creo if, if that's what's best for you. Um, another one is uh, what version of Creo do you need to run Creo design essentials? Uh, just just to be clear, we're actually not really talking about the uh, the version of Creo. This is more talking about the capabilities within that license. Uh, so, for example, you, you could still run a license of Creo Design Essentials with, with maybe even Creo 2. Um, the only caveat to that is uh, any uh, capabilities within that that came in at a later date. For example, the Intelligent Fastener extension came in at Creo 3. You wouldn't be able to use that functionality, but you would still be able to use Creo uh, and Python cabling, which has been around for, for a number of years. Um, another one, uh, if I'm already on a Creo subscription license, do I automatically move over to one of these licenses? Uh, similar to what I said before. Um, no, these are new new packages. Um, so there are upgrade or, or, or renewal options where you can uh, kind of move to one of these licenses. So the upgrade costs are significantly lower than, say, purchasing a, a license uh, or an extension separately. Uh, again, it's best to uh, get in touch with us. Um, I've noticed on the uh, uh, 
uh, on one of the polls that a number of you weren't sure what license you were on, whether perpetual subscription. So again, another great reason so we can explain to you exactly what you've got and talk you through uh, the options for moving on to one of these new design packages. Um, another question here, so what if all I want is a standard license of Creo but add CFD, do I have to buy one of the bundle packages which might have uh, capabilities I don't need? Uh, the answer is no, you don't necessarily have to. You could still buy a standard Creo license, uh, Creo Design Essentials, and then bolt on CFD or FEA or Polygy Optimization as a separate license if that's more cost effective to do so. Um, you don't have to buy everything via bundles these days. I think PT have 45 extensions uh, at the moment within uh, available to Creo users. So yes, you can still bolt them on as, uh, as, uh, separately. Um, we're just coming up to our 40 minute um, time limit at the moment. So I'm just going to, uh, 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 the questions that we haven't been able to uh, answer, there will be sent in a follow-up email to all attendees and all who registered. Um, so we will, uh, we will do that uh, hopefully uh, to tomorrow. Um, and again, I suppose uh, just thank you for everybody that has uh, attended this uh, webinar this morning. So exciting news from PTC to uh, add this functionality into the, uh, you know, the kind of entry level licenses uh, for PTC Creo. Uh, I said the, the news has been very well received from the customers that I've certainly spoke to. Um, so as I said, we will publish uh, this webinar on our YouTube channel uh, and everybody will be sent a, a link to it, again, with all the uh, uh, questions and answers that uh, came through earlier. Um, and again, if you do want to get in touch, uh, just please do via uh, info at root-solutions.co.uk or via our website www.root-solutions.co.uk or connect with us via one of our social media platforms uh, and we will uh, get back to you uh, with uh, any, any answers that you have. So again, thanks from, uh, yeah, ah, well, well remember James, there's a chat feature on our website actually. So if you do go onto our website in the bottom right hand corner, you can just uh, get a direct link into one of our sales or technical team to be able to ask a quick question rather than, you know, having to have a long email chain is a really useful tool actually uh, and um, I said a lot of our uh, people have just inquired a benefit from that so so yeah thanks for the reminder James um, but yeah uh, so I'm going to close this uh, uh, session down now again thanks everybody for attending um, if you need any uh, extra information please just get in touch on the any of the options on the screen all right thanks very much <laughs>